Hello, how's it going? This video is not really going to be a code along video. It's going to be more of an explanation video. I want to have a look at depth buffering. So the situation is, let's say we have a bunch of triangles. I'll just go ahead, make some space. Okay, so as I was saying, a bunch of triangles, like here we are, here's three small triangles, and then one large triangle. And they've got a Z component here, which is the depth, where a depth of zero is right at the eye, and a depth of one is at the maximum possible distance. So as you can see, if we were to read these triangles off one by one, um, these three triangles are sort of out of order. Like these triangles do have some overlap but we should be going 0.1, or we should really be drawing the furthest one first, 0.3, then 0.2, then 0.1. So if we were to do this, dispatching one triangle per compute shader and not doing any depth buffering, things would be in the wrong order. And it's even worse because we've got a compute shader, because these are small triangles, I'm using my small triangle shader, it's one thread per triangle. So we don't even really have a guarantee of how these triangles are going to be ordered. So it's bad. Um, and then in addition to that, just the way I'm drawing this, I'm actually drawing the big triangle first, which means the little triangles would be right on top of it. Anyway, point is it's bad. We need to take in this information, this depth information and use that to order the pixels. Now this is tricky because we can get a color buffer and we can treat that color buffer as an atomic image and do operations on that. We can get a depth buffer, a storage buffer, treat that with atomic operations. But there's not really a way in Vulkan to directly take one buffer and atomically test it and atomically modify another thing at the same time. It's tricky. So I went on to r slash Vulcan and posed this question and got some really helpful feedback. So really big thank you to the folks at um, r slash Vulcan. But here's my solution. There were two solutions proposed. I'm doing one solution in this video and then the other solution in another future video. But one solution is to do a depth pass and then a color pass. So, well, of course, we're going to clear the screen. So we've got a clear screen shader, which goes along and stores a blank color in the color buffer and also sort of stores a, a, a maximum depth, a depth of one in the depth buffer. Now you'll see here that I'm using 64 bit integers. And the reason for that is that this depth buffer will have actually two components. In the most significant bits, I'll be storing the depth value for comparison purposes. And then in the lower significant bits, I'll be storing the index of the triangle, which had that depth value. So if I compare two different triangles for the same fragment, the comparison will only be done on the most significant bits. And then if those significant bits match, I guess we'll do a comparison on the triangle index or something. But anyway, we're going to have a record of which triangle set it off. So as I said, I've got this depth pass. Now in the depth pass, we go through, we set up the triangle as if we're about to draw it, but we don't write in the color value. We calculate the depth value with barycentric coordinates. And then we shift that up to the most significant, you know, 32 bits. And then we slot in the index corresponding to that triangle. And then we do an atomic min. So this will write that data in on the condition that it's closer than whatever fragment was there previously, if any. That's the depth pass. And it's pretty similar for the big triangle rasterizer. Um, where have I got? pretty similar. We go through, we have our depth, we do the same operation there. But then we come to the color pass. So the way the color pass works is we go through, 
again, see, we are doubling up on these calculations. This leads me into the, the next part. But we go through, and then we look at the depth buffer, and we pick out the lower 32 bits and say, hey, which triangle won that fragment? Which triangle won the right to draw to that fragment? And then if that's not us, then we, we leave it alone. But if that is us, then we go ahead and store that result. Um, so as you can see, it's all rendering properly. I try to draw these in a really bad order, but it takes care of it. So yeah, that's our depth buffering. Now, as I was saying, this is not, I mean, it works pretty well with what I've got, but this is not a quote unquote elegant solution because a lot of calculations are being done twice. So what we could do is we can create an image where the format for every pixel is a 64 bit unsigned integer and do something very similar to what we're doing now with the triangle index. In the triangle index situation, we write in the depth at the most significant 32 bits, then the lower 32 bits are just holding the index of the triangle. But now what we could do is have the most significant 32 bits holding the depth and the lower 32 bits holding the RGBA components of the fragment that we want to write in. I mean, it'll still work the same way. We can take an atomic min and the comparison will be based on the depth, not the color, but as a side effect, the color will be updated. The only thing I would need to do then is I probably, it would be difficult, if at all, to do an image copy operation because the formats would be so vastly different, but I could always implement a compute shader by hand to extract the color information for every pixel and put it into the color buffer. So that is where I'm at. Like I said, um, not a lot of code along with me today because it was a nightmare, but um, yeah, code is provided. You can have a look through that. And yeah, I hope that everything is going well and I will see you again soon. Hello, how is it going? I just want to give a massive thank you to all of my channel supporters. I'm community funded. That's how I keep things running. If you would like to support what I do, all I ask is $2.50 a month. I really do appreciate it. Even if it's just the motivation, you know, to keep doing this sort of stuff. So without further ado, a really big thank you to Antonin Karet, Botwinka, Thank you, Falls, Declan, Endalon Studios, Gadania, Gary Duchenne, Sean Valsvilla, Lane Duhit, Mathieu Derick, and Moim. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And yeah, I hope everything's going well for you. Cheers.